welcome to Homestead in the Woods and also Cook from the Past. Today I am in a nice cozy living room here. We've got a fire in the fireplace and I am going to start getting my canning done. Now I do can all year long but now is the time when it's time to do squashes, pumpkins, that kind of a thing and get them into the, uh, the pantry for longer term storage. These do last quite a while, but you have to keep them under certain conditions. The temperature has to be right and the humidity has to be just right. And I'm really struggling getting that combination right this year. So some of my squashes already started to, to look a little sad. So that's why I'm going to be uh, canning this. Now I still have pumpkins and a couple of other squashes, but today I'm going to be doing the butternut squash. I've got the most of that. So that's the one I'm going to be doing first. So there are some changes coming uh, this year. Today is January 1st of 2024. And the changes are going to have to do with my channels. Now I have two channels right now. Like I said, it's Homestead in the Woods and Cook from the Past. And I'm finding it's very hard to keep up two different channels. And so I'm going to be combining them all into one. So from now on, I am going to be adding more videos to Homestead in the Woods and I will be migrating all of my videos from Cook from the Past over to Homestead in the Woods. And then at the end of January, beginning of February, I will be closing down the Cook from the Past and everything will then be migrated over to Homestead in the Woods. So if you're currently subscribed to Cook from the Past, if you would go to Homestead in the Woods and to find me on YouTube at Homestead in the Woods, go to at, the at sign, and then homestead in the woods and you should be able to find that uh, on youtube no problem at all so i'm also going to give you the uh, direct link to homestead in the woods down in the description so if you are watching this from cook from the past you'll be able to get right over to homestead in the woods and get subscribed to there instead so i'm going to be starting with my squash i'll be peeling it getting it cubed up and getting this canned and I will just take you along the way so that you see how that is done. So I'm going to be turning the camera around. I'm going to go into the kitchen and get some canning done. So the first process is going to be to, well, I've got the squash already washed, so that would be the first part of the process. But the next thing I'm going to do is cut off the ends and get that squash peeled. After that, I'm going to cut it into cubes and I'm going to be blanching it in this pot. I've already got it going right now so that it's on low and I'll turn it on high as soon as I get the first batch in there. My canner is over here on the other side. It's already set up with my quart jars. So that's what we're going to do next. So that's how we're going to be doing it. And I'm going to move the camera now so that you can kind of follow along as I'm cutting up the squash. Okay, this is good homegrown squash. And so one of the things I want to make sure I do is save the seeds from this. I've got a very sharp knife. You want to make sure your knives are sharp. You're more likely to cut yourself in a bad way if your knives are not sharp. Now I will share with you, I've got the Smurf colored glove on today. I burned one of my fingers quite badly yesterday and it took the skin right off. While I was putting a log on the fire, it... Um, my, my hand actually accidentally touched one of the cast iron uh, pieces that uh, holds the wood. So anyway, I got my Smurf glove on today. I've also got a couple of bowls. This is going to be just for the kind of the scrubbing so it's going to go into the compost pile. And because this is a good homegrown squash and I'm going to want to get the seeds from this, that's where I will be putting the seeds as I gather them. I'll probably only do it from this one squash. This is the nicest one that I have. And um, it's about the right shape where it gives you the most um, meat in it. And the seed cavity is very small. So that maximizes how much um, of, of the squash that you get if you have one that is kind of shaped like this. So this, this is the one that I'm going to want to get the seeds from because this is the best looking squash. All right, I've already cut the top off and I'm just going to try and slice it down the center. It's got a pretty flat bottom, so it's staying pretty solid on this counter. Okay, so here you can see that it really has a very small seed cavity and the rest of this is nice usable squash. So that is what I'm gonna to want to grow in my garden next year. So there's tools on the market that you can use. Oh, 
just lost them on the floor, to, to get the seeds and the, the stringiness uh, out. But I'm finding this is a tablespoon, and it works about as well as anything else. Um, I don't know how I could make it e any easier by using any special tools for this. So this is just what I am using. Look how easily those seeds come out. And I'm going to stop for a moment here and get the ones that hit the floor so they don't get stepped on. All right, it looks like it was just two seeds. It's nice that the seeds are separating easily from all this stringy stuff. That way I don't have to try and sort it from the stringiness while I'm washing the seeds and preparing them for saving a little bit more in here. All right, I'm going to finish getting the rest of this out of here, and I will be back when it's time to cut this up. I'm going to go ahead and peel it and get it ready and then just chunk it down. We're going to save it in this bowl. All right, I'm moving on to <coughs> getting the rind off of here. These cleaned up nicely. And you can certainly use a peeler like I'm using, and this is a very sharp one. This is, is a KitchenAid peeler, super sharp. So you do have to watch your fingers very carefully. And when you're peeling it, you may notice that there's, let me see if I can get this in the camera, there's a, a part that is very orange, and that's what you want to expose. But there's also, uh, you can kind of see it along here, a lighter uh, yellow color. And you want to make sure when you're peeling it that you get down to this golden color because the, there's like kind of an off taste that you'll get if you keep this lighter yellow on here. So that is what I'm doing. You can also use a knife to do this. It's whatever you have available. And so I'm going to go ahead and finish peeling this. I have to tell you one of the things that I really like about this KitchenAid um, peeler is, is this thing is a beast. It is actually taking um, the peel all the way down so I'm really not encountering a lot of that the, the lesser yellow color on here. But again, it is really, um, it's very ergonomic. You can um, grip hold of that a lot easier than a thinner one. And it is really making this, let me show this to you. You can really kind of see now the difference in the yellow, right? Especially right in here, you can see the lighter yellow color. That's what you want to get through. You don't want to keep that on your squash. So anyway, I'm just kind of, um, I'm not you know, selling the product, but I thought you might like if you are planning on doing some squash like this. It gets through this peel a lot easier than, um, well, let me show you one of the other. Um, all right, I'm going to show you another one of the peelers. This is a Kuhn Rikon, and for things like carrots, um, if you're going to be peeling cucumbers, things like that, this is is fine, but it's a lot more difficult to do something like a heavy rind on this. It's more difficult and you have to make more uh, swipes at it. So anyway, that's why I like this one. Just wanted to kind of uh, fill you in on making your job a little easier. Okay, have them both peeled, as you can see. And now it's time to get them cut up. So I'm probably just going to start by cutting down the center and making this a little bit smaller as far as uh, the size of the pieces I have to work with. So I'm just going to start cutting it in about one inch slices and then I will cut it down further into smaller pieces. You want to make your hmm. something just turned off there. You want to make <clears throat> the pieces as close in size as possible, just for consistent canning purposes. I need to stop for a second and check on something. So I had to step away for a moment. Someone, as luck would have it, came to the front door. That doesn't 
happen too often. We're out here in the middle of nowhere, but they were coming to pick up um, some, some labels, shipping labels we needed to print up for them. Their printer wasn't working, so well, someone lives in the neighborhood here, and they just came by to pick up their labels. So I'm making these in roughly one-inch cubes. Again, it doesn't need to be precise, but try just try to get them all in the ballpark the same size. So I'm going to finish cutting all of this up, and then we're going to go, go ahead and get them going in the, uh, the pot over here to get them blanched. Okay, I've gotten done doing just one squash, and there's quite a bit here. This is probably enough for um, one blanching session, so um, I'm still waiting for that water to boil. So I'm going to go ahead and keep cutting until that water boils, and we'll start the blanching process. So while I'm working on this second squash, I just wanted to um, point something out here. Sometimes these uh, skins on these squashes get really, really hard, and even with a sharp knife, it's hard to get through them. So one of the things that you can do to help is just try to get a little bit of crease in there where your knife starts to embed in it, and then just roll the squash back and forth to get through it. The other thing, if it's really hard, like I've got another pumpkin up here that I'm really probably going to have to wrestle with, is you get your knife in here, and then you can whack it with the thing that helps cut through your squash. Anyway, just a little helper, and I'm going to go ahead and work on the squash now while we're waiting for this water to boil to do the blanching. Okay, I have peeled and diced two whole squashes. One of them was a little on the small side. Here's all the seeds that I have saved from the two squashes. And this is the squash that we are going to be blanching. I've got more squashes here, but this is for sure, this is probably more than I can do in one batch for blanching. So I'm going to move the camera and we can do that process. I would say this water is boiling quite nicely now. And it's time to get our squash in there. I'm going to start a little slow. And this is a, a strainer type pot. So when the time comes, I can just lift up everything out. I'm not sure that I'm going to do that because I'm going to be putting it straight over to canning jars. So we'll see. I'll play it by ear here. But uh, you want to get your squash in, and it will stop boiling once you get it in there. And we're going to be blanching these for two minutes. And that two minutes starts when the water comes to a full boil again. So it looks like we're going to be able to get everything from this bowl in here. Yep, so that was two squashes, or two butternut squashes. Now, this whole process will be the same for any kind of squash, certainly not summer squash like zucchini or yellow crookneck, that kind of thing, but for hard winter squashes, the process would be the same. And you can see over here, I've got a, a couple of, I've got a pie pumpkin and I've got a large jack-o'-lantern type pumpkin. Um, and, oops, there we go. Uh, those will be taken care of probably tomorrow or in a couple of days. I'll be doing the same process. So this will give us nice, good, shelf-stable source of squash for use later on. All right, I'm going to put the top back on this so that it can come back to a boil as quickly as possible, and then we'll start our two minutes. Um, there is no salt in this water. It's just plain water, and uh, that's all you need to blanch. I don't usually put salt in my canning products. You can always add more when you're preparing it, but, um, and, and salt is never necessary unless, of course, you're doing a, a brine type of thing. Okay, I'm going to come back when that is boiled for two minutes. Okay, it's been boiling for two minutes. The idea is just to uh, get the, oh, just barely even cooked. You don't want this to start to soften, otherwise you could end up with the uh, like a puree once it's canned. So I'm going to turn the water off and I'm going to start canning right here. 
All right, it is time to start canning. I'm going to pull these jars out of the canner. They've been staying hot. And I'm just going to pour the water out because there is enough water in this canner already. And for this type of thing, a chunky type food, I prefer to use the wide mouth jars. I may have to use a couple of non-wide mouth here. Uh, depends on how much we end up with. Ouch, that's hot. My goodness. It must have been close to the burner. Let's start this again. Definitely hot. And I'm also going to use the water that I blanched them in to fill the spaces between the, the uh, cubes of squash in the jar. What I don't want is to have these packed in. I'm going to give them a little jiggle just to kind of fill some spaces, but the squash is only going to come up to about the shoulder here and then the water will come up to just uh, under one inch below the top of the jar. So that's going to be about it for that one, I think. Whoop. That looks good. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe another piece or two. All right, that looks good. Forgot to get a ladle out. So I'm going to use some of that same water. I've got two more squashes already peeled and ready to go. So I'll need to add some water to this pan when it's time to blanch the next batch. You can use just plain boiling water too. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to just... Um, I'm just going to use a little bam bamboo skewer to just kind of make sure there's no pockets of air in this jar. Wipe the lid in case any little bits of the squash got on here. Adding my lid. Just finger tight and it is ready to go. Doesn't that look pretty? It's going to be nice to have on our pantry shelf. All right, let's get the next jar. I'm going to take it to the sink, empty the water out of it. See, that's how I had it in the canner, keeping the jar hot. Had I not put any water in this jar, the jar would have tried to just float around in the water in that canner, and of course, then it would tip over, so don't want that. I'm using quartz for this process. Um, normally with just my husband and I, I tend to can pints, but um, I decided quartz is probably going to be a good idea for this squash. For the big pumpkin in the back here that I'm going to be doing tomorrow, I will probably put it in pints because pumpkin is something I will let use less of than this butternut squash. A couple more pieces here. Just kind of get it down in there. One more. You know what? There's still room for yet one more piece, so I'm going to get that in there. So I got a little piece of that squash right there, and had that gone, gone unnoticed, I would have a 
and, and I went ahead and put it in the canner, I would most likely have ended up with a jar that did not seal properly. So that is why you need to be careful. There's nothing on that uh, jar that will get in between the jar and the lid. Good. Give it a little white now. You no longer have to uh, heat your lids. That used to be part of the process, but a while back they stopped. Ooh, this jar is so hot. They stopped that practice, so I don't do it anymore. You can if you want to. It doesn't hurt anything. And as you're doing this, make sure you do not hit that glass jar against the side of the canner. Or you'll be forever sorry because you will end up with glass in everything. And you're going to be starting all over. And of course the food in the jar would be completely ruined. I just remembered I didn't, I didn't put this... You know what, I'm going to take that other jar out. I neglected to put this, um, let's just pull it out. Better safe than sorry. Better hold this. I just realized I neglected to put this little skewer down there to make sure that there was no bubbles. So let's get that done properly. So when I go to use this butternut squash, I can either just put it into a saucepan and gently heat it up and just use it as cooked squash uh, to eat with a little salt, pepper, and butter. Or I can puree it and turn it into soup or probably even make a pumpkin type pie out of it goes those. I'm going to give that a quick rinse so nothing is on here. I'm kind of working in tight spaces here today, so it is what it is. All right, I'm really wanting to get this, um, this squash out of here quickly because it's starting to soften up which is what I did not want. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this process. Everything goes a little bit slower when you're filming. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this process, and I will come back when it's time to get it going in the canner. All right, second batch of squash is going in. Ooh, that was hot. I've got to go back to doing it by the handful. Still splashing. All right, so what I, have, what I have in the canner so far is two, four, five and a half. Um, I say half because there wasn't enough put away to fill one of the jars, so I just half filled it, put in a little of the liquid, and I will finish filling up that jar as soon as this is ready. So, I'm going to wait for that to come up to a boil, and that won't take long. Time it for two minutes, and then I decided, uh, when I went off camera for a few minutes, I decided with the hot water in there, it was continuing to cook the squash, and so I actually pulled the strainer section out and set it down into this bowl so that it wouldn't continue cooking. So that might be a thing to do if it feels like uh, you're going kind of slow in filling your jars. All right, this is ready. And I think to prevent this from continuing to cook in the water, I'll separate it that way. And hopefully that prevents it from getting overcooked because it's going to cook some more while it's in the canner. So, 
we want to do our best to not end up with mush. So these are still nice and firm. The idea is to just blanch it, not to make it soften. So I'm afraid that last batch did get into that soft zone because it sat in the water. This is my first time of doing this particular type of process with squash. So, well, you live and you learn from each time you do it. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up. I've done canning on other videos, so, um, you know, it's not like I was going to do the whole from beginning to end. I will just catch you up on it, however. Do bubble. I only have one more quart jar in the canner to use. I'm going to have some left over, so I might be able to squeeze a pint in there. Is the last of my wide mouth quart jars. Now I'm going to be forced to use one of the regular mouth jars. It'll work, just a little more cumbersome. Hey Molly, you helping Mama? Yeah, it's kind of hot in here. You can see my, my dog here. Hey Miles. <laughs> so she's got to come see what's going on. I think I may actually be able to get a couple of quart jars in the very top of this, or pint jars in the top of this canner. So we don't want to have to do another whole canner full for just one jar so I will split it up yeah that looks like about two pints worth did she get in she did she made her cameo appearance okay. I'm still I'm still filming and that's fine <laughs> it's all real life people and animals come and go all right relax for her. Yeah, no, she's looking for her dinner. All right, got a little bit too much fluid in that jar, so I'm going to pull it out somehow. it up and pour it back into the cooker. Well, that's kind of messy, but it did the job. Actually got a little bit too much out. So I'll put some back. going to put the camera on pause, go down and get a couple of pint jars, and I will finish this up, and I will come back after everything has been processed in the canner. So I will see you in a little while. Okay, I got a total of eight quarts down in the bottom, and I've got three pints up at the top of this canner, and now it's time to close it up. Okay, all right, while well, I'm waiting for the pressure canner to pressurize, 
I'm going to take all of this to the compost and I will be back when this is completely done and all of our squash has been pressure canned. The butternut squash is out of the canner and as you can see there's still bubbles and almost looks like boiling coming from some of these jars. That is completely normal and that will settle down as the jars cool off. But they are done. They are looking wonderful. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.